Hey y'all, welcome to our Zen Chaos, a little bit of Zen in a world full of chaos. Um, I am Carrie and I am a mom, doula, homeschool teacher, cook, clean, I think 9,000 other things that let's be honest, we don't have time to go over. So today, by the video name, I'm sure that you know that we're here today to talk about why we switched from public school to homeschool. Um, and so I kind of wanted to break it down into three parts. The first being what behaviors Luna was demonstrating that made me feel like it was time to switch um, how I was feeling about homeschool as well as a little bit of what my husband was feeling about or was feeling about um, homeschool. And then, you know, the the differences that I've found between public and homeschool and why you might want to consider it if it's something that your family is able to do and why your family might, may or may not be able to incorporate homeschooling into your uh, routine. So let's start off with Luna. So there, Luna did go to school, like public school, um, for kindergarten she went the entire year for kindergarten and she went for the first couple months of first grade and then uh, in kindergarten there was an issue with the school and then again in first grade there was a similar issue and that's kind of what pushed me over the edge but I do want to start off by saying that um, one I'm probably not going to discuss those issues on this channel and two um, I have always wanted to homeschool my children. I homeschooled her for pre-K and I'm homeschooling Serenity, who's my preschooler right now. And I love that. And so making the change to homeschool for me was not a difficult choice. It was something that I really wanted to do. Um, so what behaviors was Luna just demonstrating that made me want to homeschool? Um, the first was she was tired. like. All the time because her school started at like 7 a.m. so she had to get up at and we it wasn't our district school so we had to drive there um, and that was like a 15 to 20 minute drive so we'd have to leave the house at like 640 so in order for her to like get up get dressed get her stuff together get some food in her I was waking her up like 545 6 a.m every day and that's really hard on a small growing body so she was tired all the time she would come home from school and she'd want a nap um, but then she'd go to bed too late anyways it was just she was exhausted all the time um, we started noticing some behavior changes in her like she started being I say it's really sassy but um, she she was just like back talking us all the time and we're totally a home where we invite our children to question everything and we want them to question what we're saying and and um, to push back if they feel like something is incorrect or if they're not in agreement with it um, but it was more than that it was more like being rude for the sake of being rude which is not something that we really tolerate in our home and then she in kindergarten she had a lot of homework in my opinion for a kindergartner like there was a project every single night on top of the stuff that we would already do at home so we had to like push our fun things away like going on hikes and studying the plants and animals or going to the library and getting a whole bunch of books to read and doing art and like science experiments here at home like we had to stop doing that because she had so much homework after school that she had to do in kindergarten mind you so um so even though she was doing well with that in kindergarten come first grade she like she was just kind of over the idea of homework and um, but at the same time, like she, she started to kind of feel like she wasn't as smart as the other people. And when I'd ask her to start reading, you know, cause we were supposed to practice reading 20 minutes a day, which we still do at home. But when she was going to school, she would come home and she would just start crying. Whenever I would bring a book out and ask her to do words, she would hide her face and like her, she would just 
whine and cry as soon as like I would ask her to read and it just broke my heart like I don't want to cry but it broke my heart to see her hating learning as much as she was at that time so that was a big indicator for me that something wasn't right um, and it's weird because at the same time she was crying because she was so upset because she felt less than she was also feeling bored because they weren't doing the subjects that she liked like science and math and you know she she was like we always just we count to a hundred or like we do some basic addition or whatever and that just wasn't challenging enough for her so she was feeling bored but at the same time feeling dumb like it's it's weird like how she was feeling um and then she wasn't enjoying going to school anymore like in kindergarten she would wake up like excited to go but come first grade when it's no more like playing a lot and like having fun when it was more like sit in a desk and repeat all of these words um she just got to the point where she didn't want to go anymore she would wake up in the morning like do i have to like can't i stay home like she just wasn't about it um and then lastly it was the normal like you know there were kids that were mean to her and picking on her and like like they'd be out on the playground and they'd be like throwing rocks at her or dirt at her or whatever um and that happens to probably every kid I know it happens to me when I was in school and my husband and I, like everyone gets picked on and I kind of feel like it's a bit of like a welcome to society kind of thing so um, it was never like intense bullying or anything of that nature, but it definitely uh, resonated with me the fact that she was having to deal with um, with people doing that to her. Um, so that was kind of what Luna was demonstrating that made me feel like maybe homeschooling would be a good idea for us. Um, and then for me, what was happening with me where it was making me feel like maybe we should homeschool was I was tired too like it's not easy staying up late making sure your kids backpack is packed making sure their lunch is packed making sure that you know um, their clothes are ready for the next day then getting up early and making breakfast and getting them dressed and making sure everything is great so that you can drive for 20 minutes to get them to school and then drive 20 minutes back in traffic. So like I was in the car for like an hour and a half a day just driving to and from school. That's not even including the wait time in the carpool lane or to find parking um, to park there because there was no parking lot for her school. So like all of these things, it was just like a ton of time given just for like the bare minimum you know what I mean um, and then as a doula I work on call and so sometimes I'll be at a birth for like 30 hours and then I get home and it's really hard for me to get up and go to her school bright and early in the morning and so my husband would do that from time to time but still like with my work schedule or if I was at a birth and she needed to be picked up from school I was always constantly like where's Luna like who's gonna pick her up who's gonna take her to daycare is she gonna be at someone's house like how am I going to navigate this and it, it was a very like high stress um, thing for me to figure out like how my work was going to work along with her schooling um, so that was something as well um, also, we really, as a family, we love to travel. This year we went to um, all the states. Um, we Louisiana and um, Idaho were our two big ones, but while we were in Idaho, we also visited Washington and Oregon. Um, and, and it was great to just be able to pick up and take off and we didn't have to like clear it with teachers we didn't have to get a bunch of like makeup homework for her we didn't have to worry about like truancy laws or anything like that um, because 
it, it, we were homeschooling by that point and we were able to take our kids on these awesome vacations and where they get to learn about different cultures and they get to learn about geography and about you know the ecosystems in that area and all of these amazing things for travel and so that was that was huge and of course the fact of the matter is is that I've always wanted to homeschool my kids like since before she went to kindergarten and my husband Earl was like you know I don't want her to be that weirdo that you know doesn't have any like social skills and is you know the typical like homeschool stereotype when we think about homeschooled kids but I feel like we're now in a day and age where homeschooling doesn't mean that you're like out on a farm away from everybody like we live in the middle of Austin Texas like there's plenty of socialization happening all the time here all kinds of different events always happening and she has her group of friends she's in Girl Scouts she she has a lot of time with other children so socialization is really not a big deal um, and then also I wanted to instill values into her that I found important. Um, we are not a religious family at all. Um, we are definitely a secular homeschooling family, but um, there are a lot of values that I find very important to instill into especially young children as they're growing and that's like kindness and generosity and all of the other My Little Ponies that you can think of. And it's, it felt like to me that even though they talk about those things in public school, I didn't feel like it was coming across the way I wanted it to or in the amount that I felt that it should be coming across for my children. So um, definitely our, our core values at home was something that I wanted more time to and still into my children um, and also this this one's a little difficult because some people would be like oh well children don't need to know that and maybe you're right but um, learning about culture and diversity and um, humankind and honest history lessons that don't sugarcoat things and don't say you know like oh this or that obviously age appropriate do not get me wrong but I I one of my values is honesty above everything else and I just feel like in a lot of public school systems history is not honest and and that is you know it's not I wouldn't say it's the teacher's fault or the school system's fault. I think it's, you know, we have to be, they have to be so careful about what they say to people's children because of the backlash from different parents and, and everything. And I completely understand that, but it was important to me to like teach history honestly to my children. Um, and so Though we, we cover it in like age appropriateness and I in other videos I will show like the kind of curriculum that we use to teach history um, and to have these open and honest discussions. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll cover that into a different video, but that was another thing that I thought was really important. Now, why, like what, what would be um, something that would hinder you from being able to homeschool. Uh, first off is a desire. If you just need a break from your children, that's okay. It's okay. No one's judging you. If you need a break from your children, have a break from your children and send them to the public school if it's working for y'all. If um, you have a job during the day, you work over 20 hours a week and you know, like you just don't have the time or the availability for that that's okay that's okay you don't need to be hard on yourself about that um, if if your child just really doesn't like it if your child wants to go to school and they are thriving in school then 
that is awesome and you should let them go to school if that's really what they want um you know i i mean if there are if you have a special needs child who um, is able to be taken care of in a way that fits their special needs at their school you know they have certain programs that are really great for their special needs then send them to school you should not you should never feel shame or um, frustration or I just don't think that learning should be a negative experience and if it is a negative experience then something needs to change um, reasons why you might want to homeschool if your child is acting really bored if you are noticing um, behavioral changes if um, if you know they they're saying no I don't want to go to school I hate school school is horrible I hate learning anything like that if you do have the freedom and your schedule if you do like and are able to travel um, on a pretty consistent basis any of these things it might be a good idea to look into homeschooling if you have the desire if you're like man I think it'd be so cool like we on the weekends we always go to museums and we you know we are always learning through YouTube videos and going in the backyard and playing and like I really value that time with my children it might be something to look into for you um, I don't think there's any one-size-fits-all I don't think there's any curriculum that would fit any specific um, homeschooler I don't think there's any um, anyways I don't think that there's you know any one-size-fits-all I think you as your as a parent kind of know and understand what your children are into and what's going to help them thrive and I think as long as you are putting their if you're I feel like if you're putting them at the forefront and you're wanting to make sure that they are taken care of as best as possible then you're doing a good job quite honestly so um, that's that's basically the basics of why we decided to homeschool um, why Luna is doing it she like it again if she was like I hate homeschool this is horrible like I miss all my friends I'm lonely I'm bored if that was happening we would not be homeschooling but Anytime I ask her like do you like homeschool is this working for you she's like yeah I love it like I don't like this or I don't like this part of it and I'm like okay how can we change that so we're still working out the kinks we've only been homeschooling since October and it's February so October November December for like four months um, but these four months have been amazing and I was I was a little nervous like I am making this huge life change for my family and my children and what if I hate it and what if I'm eating my words to my husband and saying that this is something that I really wanted to do um, and it was it was scary but it seemed to turn out all good actually Luna came in here right now um, I'm making a video about homeschooling would you Hi. like to say anything about what you think about homeschool I like it because I don't do much school and there's more weekends and we get to do a little more fun, mm -hmm. but we mostly stay home and clean. <laughs> we mostly stay home and clean. We do clean. There are home chores that are part of our homeschool curriculum. That's very true. Um, but do you do work? Mm -hmm. You do school work? What kind of work do you do? Uh, today we didn't have any pages to do, so we did flashcards in a game. Flashcards in a game, uh huh. And so, what what flashcards did we do? We did reading and sight uh, and. We did so we did sight words, <coughs> reading. Um, and we did math. We did subtraction, right? Mm hmm. And we did culture. We talked about 
a woman who was a feminist and taught people how, taught women how to read back in the 1600s, right? De La Cruz, can't remember her first name because I'm not looking at the card. And then we played a phonics game, right? Mm -hmm. And what else did you do? Train game! Train game is a phonics game and you listen to... Red, little red riding hood. And yeah. I took out the CD all by myself. Did you put it back in the book? No. <laughs> well, we're going to have to do that. Okay. So, bye. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're just being a freak. But, um, but it works for us. Homeschooling works for us. And I really like it. She really likes it. Um. The extra free time is definitely awesome. Just to kind of say we've changed. This is what we've changed and why. And I hope you liked it. So till next time, y'all. Bye.